Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. Live for Christ, live for Christ. Show it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to read from 2 Peter and Jude today. I told you yesterday, you know when Paul said they built on the same foundation? The last few books of the Bible talks about the exact same thing over and over again. They get it in your head. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, according as his divine power have given unto, to us all things that are pertaining to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at these char characteristics. You're going to notice something. Whenever God talks about, you know, righteousness and things like of such matter, he talks about characteristics. He never talks about things. He talks about character. Mm -hmm. For if these bees being you abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So if virtue and all these things are characteristics of righteousness, what's sin? Sin is also characteristics. Well, for the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. For so an interest shall be ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore well, I would not be neglect, negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present, yea. Yea, I think it meet as long as I are, am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Knowing the shelter, I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be all able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Now, in the Luton Living Translations, you know what they say? Fabricated stories. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were our witness of his majesty. Now, think about this. You got a lot of preachers. They tell you a lot of made-up stories. But a true believer ain't got to make up stories to follow you, to lead you to Christ. It said, but were our witness of his majesty. True believers are eyewitnesses of his majesty. They see Christ working in their life. They ain't got to make up a story. They got to tell their story. <laughs> With the story of Christ, they're not going to fabricate nothing. They're not going to fake nothing. And I got to fake the funk. I got to tell the truth. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him that from the ancient glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Once you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, the day star rise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophet of scripture no prophecy of scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came in the, not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But these were false prophets. But there were false prophets among, among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Now, he just told you about the cunningly devised fables. A lot of these false teachers are going to speak a lot of falsehood. They're going to tell you a lot of good stories. 
that are false and fabricated, who previously shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord there that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, now here it is, another characteristic, through covetousness, where they with feigned words, fabricated words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of long time lingereth not in their damnation slumber of God. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be served unto judgment, and spared not the whole old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the word, world of the ungodly. Now think about it, he said, a preacher of righteousness, some about your words, some about your characteristics, and turn the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overflow, make them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And deliver Judge Lot, who vexed his soul with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the ungodly out of temptation. I mean, deliver the godly out of temptations, and to preserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness, and despise government, Presumptuous they are, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. When they say speak evil of dignities, he's talking about angels, Satan. Hmm. Whereas angels, which are great in power and might, bring not relic accusation against them before the Lord. Now think about people who blame Satan and blame spirituals, demons on everything. Now, if you read the other, the, the New Living Translation, they say self-control in a lot of spots. You see, people always try to blame, the blame, play the blame game on everything. The devil did it. The devil this. The devil that. Oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all better pay attention. But these, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceit, deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery. Look at that characteristic. And they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hearts. They have exercised with covetous practices, greed. They With greed, they draw you in. <laughs> which have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosom, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, who was greedy, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb man speaking with man's voice forbade the maidens of the prophets. These are wells without water, clouds they are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. But when they speak great swelling words of vanity, falsehood, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, now you gotta think about it. They little what? Through covetousness. That were a clean escape from those them who live in the era. They bring you back to desire the things of the world. They use covetous practices. They use greed. Hmm. Sound like prosperity gospel to me. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome of the same he has brought in bondage. For they if after they have escaped the pollutions. Of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse than them than the beginning. For there have been better of them to not have known the way of righteousness, which are characteristics, than after they have known it to turn to the holy commandment delivered to them. Thou shalt not covet. But it happened to them according to the true proverb The dog is turned unto his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Just think in regards to this. Let's say, you find God and God gives you a peace. He gives you a humbleness. And you don't want a lot. And then you start listening to these teachers. You know God want to give you more. God want to bless you more. Now, you're like, okay, well, since this man, this glorious person, this idol, this fancy person is okay with it, I'm going to do what they do. I want to get more money too. I want to be greedy too. And like he said, look through that. They said sin is reduced when you're drawn away by your own lust. A lot of people have lust to, to be greedy or be rich 
And that's what they use the majority of the time, these prosperity teachers. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this day willingly are ignorant of that. By the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, were, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not con slack concerning his promise. What is his promise? As some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now think about that. What's the promise? Of the new earth. <laughs> so all this stuff is nothing. <laughs> Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought you to be. In all holy conversation. And godliness. Looking for and hasting. Until the coming of the day of, the God, of God. When the heavens being on fire. Shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless we according to his promise. Look for new heavens. And a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. So why should we have to be taught to try to build earthly things to gather earthly fruit? Because we're not after, we're after the new heaven, the new earth. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found on him in peace without spite and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our brother beloved, our brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given to him, have written it to us. Uh, and also and in all his epistles, speaking to them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned unlearn and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You know, people change Paul's words up so much. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also being led away with that error of the wickedness. Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory. Both now and forever. Amen. I think that's amazing. Let's go to Jude. Real quick. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy to you and peace be and, and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave diligence to write to you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. But there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained of this condemnation. Ungodly men <laughs> turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will put, therefore put you in remembrance through you once knew this how did the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not? And the angels which kept not the first estate, but left their own habitation, he had restored in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even the Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, give themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defiled the flesh, despised dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Speak evil of what's dignities? Angels and Satan, anybody. Mm -hmm. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputed his dis he disputed about the body of angels, does not bring an act against him a rallying accusation, but said the Lord rebuked thee. Now think about this, man. I tell people all the time. I didn't understand this till a few days ago when I was talking to one of my coworkers. How people blame the devil for everything. Oh, it's the devil. When I just told you yesterday, inside, when sin is produced when you drawn away by your own lust, the devil made me do Oh, it's the devil. It's the devil. Okay, keep thinking it. You might want to look in the mirror. But these speak, these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. And those things, they corrupt themselves. 
Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the Arab Balaam for reward and perish in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feast, charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about with winds, trees, fruit, withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Think about it, he's talking about carried away with strange doctrines and this and that. Raising waves of the sea, foaming out their own same wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also the seventh Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord come with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complaining, walking after their own lust. And their own mouth speaking great swelling words, having men's person and moderation because of advantage. Look at me, look at me. Look at me, look at me. How they told you there should be mockers in the last time who shall walk after their own ungodly lust. Internal. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But you, beloved, bending up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, and others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, heading even the garment spotted by the flesh, now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. You see, you can't just read Peter and Jude and get it. You got to read the other pieces too. You got to put the piece together. It's like a puzzle. The Bible is like a puzzle. It tells you what defiles. It tells you what don't defile. You understand? But my primary focus right now is the greed thing. Greed. Imagine if you are humble and you're not worried about the world and things. Yeah, you live in the world. Like Paul said, I have confidence. If you have confidence in the flesh of me, I have more so. Because Paul has come to a point where he's like fleshy things. Like things that go inside and all that don't destroy you and this and that. But things in your heart, desires in your heart. And then the Bible talks about self-control so much. Addiction is something you can't, it's like you can't, you have no control. That's what addiction is. You understand? But look at the word a lot. You see characteristics more than anything. You don't hear the word, the word blaming anything on anything that comes from out. Except your speech and your actions. How do you show that you're holy? Through your speech and your actions. Not by what you eat, not by what you drink. By your speech and your actions. Yesterday I was talking about how much he talked about the rich. You understand? David was talking about how Lot saw all the errors that was going on. It was homosexuality, mm -hmm. which is the things that destroys. Going after strange flesh, that destroys your body. Adultery destroys your body. Fornication destroys your body. And what else can destroy you? Greed. Lust that war inside your flesh. Things that trying to live a life in this world. Now, why do they always lead to the coming of Christ? And the new heaven and new earth. Because he don't want you to focus on these things. That's flying around and that's in the world. He don't want you to focus on getting rich or being a superstar. And one thing he don't want you to do is be a liar. What do I mean by that? Tell the truth. He said they, like a reading New Living Translation, they say fabricated stories. One thing I don't realize since I became a Christian, one of the hardest things for me to do is lie to people. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not trying to put my own spin on it. Everything I say to you is what is written in there. You understand? Now think about the whole angelic thing. But we live in a world that we love to point the finger at the devil. Can I tell y'all about the 400 
prophets who God allowed a seducing spirit to come and um, seduce them and make them believe a lie. You got to remember who the devil works for. Whether you want to believe it or not. He works for God. You got to be careful when you try to blame the devil. You got to be careful with that. The devil had permission to attack Job in those different ways. Sometimes God allows the devil to, to run free and do this and do that. Under orders. Just like the, hey, can I go down there and lie to those prophets? Oh, uh, yeah, you can do it. See, God has an order that we don't understand. You understand? Don't understand. You see, that's why he said, bring not a rallying accusation against them. The devil, the devil, the devil. Evil, evil. Well, once you realize evil comes from within, all the devil and his demons can do is entice you to believe something that may be false, just like the lying spirit. Now, if those 400 prophets were godly men, they wouldn't have been seduced by a lying spirit. They were already liars. They was already lying from the jump. Acting like they work for God. And many people do that. That's why it scares me because I'm like, Lord, I hope I'm telling this the truth away. Because I can be found to be a liar too. So I try to stay with the truth as much as possible. Let me pause and I will continue.